All right, our next talk, dynamic partial order reduction for checking correctness against transaction isolation level. And the authors are Ahmed Ujani, Konstantin Enea, and Enrique Roman Calvo. And Enrique will give the talk. Thank you very much to uh, So nowadays, applications such as e-commerce, social networks, or trading employ databases on the software. However, uh, what the programs actually do is not that clear. Let's suppose, for example, we have Alice and Bob that send 100 euros each to Claire. We may ask ourselves, how much money did Claire, retrie uh, did Claire retrieve at the end? One would expect that the answer would be 200. However, actually, it depends on the database guarantees. Because in general, a distributed databases may ensure weak data constraints due to optimizations, because they are replicated and distributed. So we actually have to focus on the concurrent access to the database. So the setting is as follows. We have a program, Alice and Bob, that has to, at the same time, uh, comply with the specification given by the client, but also take into account the isolation level given by the database. Uh, so for example, we have here Alice and Bob. It has to, at the end, be a concurrent bank transfer, but at the same time, have to ensure that Claire received the 200 euros we expected. A bit more formally, uh, our setting is as follows. We have uh, programs that are collection of concurrent sessions, which each section is a sequence of transactions. When a transaction is a sequence of read and write database accesses, uh, one access per row read. So if, if we see here, we can see Alice and Bob that both read the balance of Claire and then write 100 euros more to the balance they have. Uh, these programs run on a database that have a particular isolation level set uh, that just the semantics of concurrent transactions. Some well-known isolation levels are serializability, snapshot isolation, causal consistency already committed. And in general, the set of behaviors increases at the isolation levels weakness. Let me show you with an example again. If we take Alice and Bob, then this program can run on uh, on top of site reliability, when transactions run as if there were no concurrency. Therefore, we execute one transaction, then the next one, and at the end, Claire received 200 euros. Another uh, possibility is that uh, this program runs and, uh, under recommitted, when one of the cases that both Alice and Bob read from the initial state, written zero euros, then both write 100, and when Claire receives, uh, check what, what, how much money did she receive, she will only see 100 instead of 200. Clearly, this is a problem. And our objective is to do verification, meaning checking safety properties of database applications that no bad state is ever rich. For that, we do bound and bundle checking, when we bound the number of sessions, but also the number of transactions per session. If we try to do this naively, however, this is not scalable. Because if we say here, Alice and Bob, uh, if we run under serializability or recommitted, the number of execution is two and four. However, if instead of we have Charles and Douglas, four friends that send each 100 euros to Claire, and the recommitted, we also have more than 200 uh, um, executions. Clearly, this is due to the state explosion, uh, even under a simpler program. Therefore, we have to address it. And for that, we will apply a technique called dynamic partial order reduction, also called DPOR. So DPOR, given an equivalent relation, try to explore one representative per class. Uh, it's a well-known technique from the 90s already that, for example, here, observing the uh, tree of executions, sometimes we don't need to explore the, full, uh, the all possible executions because actually some execution could be equivalent and therefore to uh, answer to the question, is this program safe, if we explore only one of them on this red set, it will be enough. Uh, 10 years late, no, 15 years later, uh, we get the first paper that uh, managed to compute this equivalent relation on the fly and took another nine years to manage to get the first paper that is produced an algorithm that is optimal, meaning that we only explore one representative per class. This technique is well known in the tech community because it has been applied for analyzing memory models, such as SE, TSO, PRSO, but only last year we get the first algorithm that we uh, can uh, do this process employing only polynomial memory. In our case, for applied deport uh, 
on their um, distributed databases, the key notion we have to take care of is the notion of history. That is just a graph representing dependencies between transactions in such a way that two executions are equivalent if they have the same history. For example, we have the dependency write read, because every time you read a value, this value has to be written by someone. So there is a dependency between my read and the write that writes it. Another possible dependency is session order between uh, transactions that belongs to the same session, but it will not appear in the rest of the uh, talk. So we take again Alice and Bob. Every possible uh, executions where Alice reads from the initial state, Bob and Bob read uh, what Alice wrote, leading to Claire 200 euros, will be represented with the following graph. While every execution where Alice and Bob both read the initial state and then they write 100 euros, each missing each other updates, will be represented with the right mouse history. So what we present here is the fur deeper algorithm for model checking concurrent programs using databases. It's parametric in the solution level, and it's sunny complete, meaning that every explore history is consistent, and the other way around, every consistent history is explored. It's optimal, because no history is put into us, but we wanted more. We wanted that uh, the algorithm be strongly optimal, meaning that never engages in free separation. We don't explore a branch that is partially consistent, but can never be extended to a consistent one. Uh, however, we only managed to achieve for some isolation levels that we call causal extensible, and in particular, it's impossible for snapshot isolation and serializability. Uh, finally, for not uh, cheating ourselves and hard coding the, um, the hardness of the problem in the memory, we only use polynomial memory. An approach is the swapping based algorithms that are deeper algorithms for distributed databases. It's a generalization of Cocologanic et al., where we basically enumerate histories one after another. And the main idea is as follows. At any point, we explore, given a history H, we have, uh, we get an, a new event, A, new instruction, given some, by some schedule, and then we try to explore all possible extensions and all possible swaps, the two uh, main steps of our algorithm, using this information given by the schedule. So, a stand is a step that executes a new instruction and adds it to the history. So, for example, here, imagine that we have a program with two transactions, and we already execute the first one, the write, x1. And we want to add the next instruction, read x. Then, what we do is actually add it. Now it's in black, as you can see. But we also add the dependencies introduced with this instruction. Because it's a read, it has to reach a value. And if it, writes, if it reads the value written by the initial transaction, we add the edge, as we see in the center history. While if it reads the white is one, it, the edge goes from the first transaction to the second transaction. The other step is called swap, and basically tries to modify the execution order of a read and a write to observe new behaviors. For example, here, we may happen that we have executed further read x, and later, because of the schedule choices, appear the, the transaction that writes x1 to observe a different behavior that may lead to a potential uh, failure, we have to swap, literally, the write x1, and then make read to read this new value to observe this other behavior. However, swap is a very delicate step, and if we don't manage it carefully, we may lead to, uh, to violate some of the properties we want in the algorithm. In particular, it may violate strong optimality. Let's suppose we have a, we're in a history H and we try to swap to a history is one that is consistent. It may happen that when we try to extend every possible uh, history that we are uh, observe are in, is inconsistent. And the key point is that when we are in state H, we don't know how the program will uh, continue, if there, if there is any possibility to be correct or not. However, what we have done is first uh, is delay the swap, first extending to a possible history H2, and then, when was the time to swap, check that actually this leads to inconsistent state and don't take it. This relies on the fact that extends, uh, assume that this, the extend doesn't fail, and we can promise that it never fails if there is at most one transaction pending. Therefore, we only uh, swap after the transaction is committed, so we can guarantee this property. Moreover, uh, consecutive swaps may also violate optimality. Imagine, for example, we have the history on top with transactions like one, two, three, and we want to obtain the bottom history when transactions are ordered like three, one, two. 
one possible way to obtain uh, the bottom history is first swap in the transaction three uh, before the two, and then swap again to put the three on top. Another possibility is simply to swap the three on top of the, the first one. Clearly, we have obtained the bottom history from two different paths. Therefore, we violate optimality. So the solution is to establish a protocol for avoiding redundant swaps. And it's based on that swap transactions cannot be swapped uh, twice. So the rightmost branch that swap twice will not ever happen. So here, main contribution, we propose a sound, complete, strongly optimal swapping-based algorithm for causal extensible isolation levels employing polynomial memory. Where causal extensible isolation levels are those that every history can be extended without introducing new dependencies. Let me explain it with an example. So let's suppose we have a history and we have a transaction here, key prime, that we want to extend, for example, with a read. We promise that this exists a transaction T that T prime depends on already in such a way that when we extend, we added a instruction t, a, on T prime, read, um, and we make it a read in front T in such a way that we reuse the same edge that was already in the graph, so we don't introduce new edges in the graph. But the number of instructions on the history increases. And there are three isolation levels that we detected, one of the main used, read committed, read atomic, and causal consistency. Therefore, our algorithm is apply, it can be applied to these isolation levels. Moreover, snapshot isolation and serializability are not causally extensible, and moreover, there is no strongly optimal algorithm for snapshot isolation and serializability because any uh, algorithm from this kind will either block or incomplete on the program on the right. Finally, we propose a sound, complete, and optimal algorithm for those strong isolation levels where we basically apply the previous algorithm and then we filter at the end. We implement this code on top of Java Pathfinder and it's available and reusable. And we evaluate both time and memory consumption and also optimality versus strong optimality properties. Uh, what you can see here is a cactus plot where we compare several algorithms and the algorithm that is better is the one that uh, his, his score it goes more to the right. So for example here, we compare a swapping based algorithm in the brand core with a baseline where we simply do a naive DFS exploration that um, where we simply a naive exploration that executes all possible executions. Okay, and clearly the swapping based algorithm outperforms the baseline. Moreover, if we, if we want to compare optimality versus strongly optimality, and as we can see here. Strongly optimal is a property that we actually desire to have in the algorithms because of the st space state explodes. Therefore, even if we can get a gain on a particular computation of an execution, overall, the gain is, uh, is not worth it. Finally, for those algorithms that are not uh, causally extensible, for isolation levels that are not causally extensible, we wanted to compare if the field that we had in the optimal algorithm, this overhead we add, is negligible or not. And actually, it is. Because if we compare the original one for causal consistency with the, over, with the one for snapshot resolution or serializability, the overhead it adds is uh, meaningless. So, as I conclude, uh, to conclude, we present the first deeper algorithm for concurrent programs using databases. We managed to characterize isolation levels that support a strong optimality, and we implement it in a tool that is available and reusable. As a future work, we would like to extend uh, this algorithm for SQL semantics that are more expressive, and we would like to use multiple isolation levels at the same time. Thank you, and I'm waiting for your questions. Questions? So if I understand correctly, the exploration algorithm is stateless, right? You are yes. not storing the states. I think that's usually true with these DPOR type algorithms. So I'm wondering if you lose something because of that. I mean, the advantage of storing the states is that when you do a search, if you come to a state you've seen before, you, you backtrack instead of repeating the work. And I mean, is there any possibility that some of this great gain that you're getting from the optimal DPOR is canceled out by you know, not storing states. Is there a trade-off there? 
um, I don't know what to answer to this question. I mean, the problem is, in general, the space state is exponential. Therefore, if you want to apply this technique in practice, I don't know how much is the, the gain has to be really worth it to actually use a, a not a stateless a approach, I guess. All right. Uh, any other questions from the audience? So let's say that somebody truly said they have the gain, right? And then okay. they write the program and they fail the, your verification. Or yeah, okay. fail. What kind of feedback do you give them uh, so that they know what to do, how to debug the thing? In that case, we will uh, produce a particular trace that will say if you, uh, this instruction will be executed in this order, uh, there is a bug uh, because you use your program under this particular isolation level. And therefore, uh, well, it's up to you actually to, to fix using that information that we provide. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so basically, you provide con counter examples. Yeah, exactly. We provide counter counter counter. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience online? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much.